Okay. Evening, people. Welcome back to my channel. Um, I think the fact that the season's starting now means you're going to be seeing a lot more of my ugly mug um, <laughs> over the next couple of weeks, months, and years. I'm joking. It's not that ugly. So. <laughs> ah, debatable, debatable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> These two rug rats on my stream, anyway. We're here to talk about Spurs, Chelsea. Um, we know obviously got the friendly tomorrow, but we're just here to just talk generally about where both clubs are ahead of the season starting as well. So I had to bring on the rug rats, the sour patch kids, the little che the, the leaders of the Chelsea Virgins. The grand Dan, Danny, what are you saying? You good? Hey, listen, all <laughs> gone people. What are we saying? You know, man is out here cooking us, calling us frog rats. Sorry, Uncle Toby, <laughs> with our receded hairline. What are you telling me, man? The hairline is pushing like this. Oh, like, oh, Yo, he's having a good time, bro. Oh, my God. Nah, nah, just violence. Come on, the violation thing. I'll come for you as well, bro. Yeah, man, I, I'm not me streaming. Don't mean I've lost the source. You get me? But I'm telling you, man, it's been a while since we last week, isn't it? What are you all saying? Yeah. Yeah, man, I'm good, man. I'm good. It's glad. All jokes aside, it's good to, to to have you on the stream, man. Um, I've missed bantering you, Chelsea, you Chelsea kids, and I, I'm genuinely one of my favorite pastimes is coming on you lot streams. It's Matisse's channel when you lose, yeah. so I'm looking forward to that this season. Anyway, but Matisse, you know my be my fellow big six, um, <laughs> and, and London Carnage. This yeah. guy's always badgering me at Saturday t midnight. Oh, can you come on the stream on Sunday? Can you come on the stream on Sunday? Why are you telling me so late? Yeah? Well, I know you're up late, do you know what I mean? With your steroids and whatnot every night doing <laughs> doing your thing. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey, hey, you should be asking. All right, all right. Yeah? Oh, <laughs> hashtag you know I mean? just... exposed. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> oh, my God. You should be asking for tips. But anyway, listen, we need to talk football. I can give you lots. If you want to get tips on muscles, I can give you tips after the stream, but we're here to talk football. So mm. with that in mind, I think it's best we start off with Spurs because we've had some... In fact, we've had breaking news all week. I'm not going to talk about the, the obvious subject first. I'm going to start off with some good news now. And in case you lot are living under a rock, you probably would have missed it, but Romero, we got the official here we go from Fabrizio, which means the... Um, club official announcement is imminent mm. and that is going to be 50 million euros guaranteed plus 5 million in add-ons which amounts to 55 million euros which is what atalanta were asking for for literally the past month so spurs <laughs> have been haggling 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 just to pay the price that atalanta wanted in the end um, but before i wax local about him What's you lot's general thoughts on Romero? Like, do you know much about him? Um, have you done any research on him? Like, what's your take on that transfer? I'll start with you, Danny. I mean, for me, I'm not going to come on the banter thing. Like, on the real, I've watched a bit of him. Like I said, um, I do, I'm not going to sit here and claim like I know him in and out. I've only watched a few minutes here and there. I've watched a few clips because obviously I see the rivals trying. I mean, I wouldn't classify Tottenham as real rivals anymore, but I see the other people in London really doing them um, some big transactions, and I've got to take um got to take a bit of a look. I think it's a good signing for you lot, to be fair. The obvious, I don't know what it is with um defenders costing so much in these transfer windows recently, but he's coming into your team with Alderweireld leaving as well. It's definitely going to be a signing that will strengthen your defense. It's going to improve your backline. You know, for the Conference League against all those Albanian plumbers and everything, you're going to need the best in that back line, in it? So you can manage to sort of script to the end and get to the Europa in it. So, but on the real, on the real, I think it's a decent sign, and I can't lie to you. Like, at Atlanta, he shows that he can be very intelligent on the ball. He's got a very good passing range as well. He's good, in it? You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't be, I wouldn't, as a Tottenham fan, obviously at Chelsea, the levels are very high, but as a Tottenham fan, I wouldn't be too disappointed with that transaction. Yeah, good, 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 good. Matisse, I'm going to come to you next before I give my take on him. What's your view on on, on Romero? Because it seems as if um, for the side who are trying to get back into the... Or for the side, some for the majority of sides who are either in the top four or trying to get back into the top four, the centre-back was a priority. It's a priority for you currently. It was, it's, it was and still is and will always be a priority for us until we fix it. Um, Arsenal, it was a priority for them having signed Ben White. Man United, it was a priority for them having signed Varane. What's your view on Romero? And where does he sort of stack against like some of the other centre-backs that we have in the league? 
I mean, I haven't seen much of him at all, to be honest, I have to say, but it sounds like as if you were rivaling Barcelona for his signature. Barcelona never really came in with the money. Obviously, we know they're broke, so that was no surprise anyway. Um, and you guys needed a centre-back. Now, is he going to improve on Ida Verald? It remains to be seen, because I think Ida Verald was one of the best centre-backs you guys have had. Do you know what I mean? In terms of modern-day centre-backs playing out from the back, he was brilliant for you guys. Um, and, and I'm surprised he never really just about made that move up to a Man City or someone who was that good, especially with Belgium and whatnot. They've declined in their back line as well. So well, it's going to be interesting to see if he can, you know, come over now from Serie A and, and make the jump up to the Premier League and how he defends over here. It's going to take a little bit of time to adjust as well. He's quite young, is it? How old is he? 20? 20, 23. 23. So, you know, Serie A is not the worst place in the world to, as a defender to learn your trade. So I'm expecting, I'm expecting a lot. But you guys had to, you had to break the bank for this guy. You, know, you had to get a defender in. I think it was needs must for you. Um, we will talk about the glitz and glamour, but defence is, is the foundation of building any team if you're going to go forward. So Chelsea will know that better than anyone. So I haven't seen much of him, but I've heard great things. I've heard he's definitely up there as one of the best centre-backs in Serie A. So he's got a big, you know, reputation to to live up to. And he sounds, you know, the main thing here for me is that he sounds delighted to be joining you. He said it's one of the biggest opportunities of his career in his life. Can you imagine? <laughs> He's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna learn quick when he when he joins. Hold like, on oh, a second. Hold oh, on a second. Pool, this is not man. what I thought it was. <laughs> it's that London pool, man. He's London. Isn't it? I'll uh, tell you, that's he what wants he to play for the club, London. which is the main thing. So I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued, man. Who's gonna partner him though? That's the, that's the interest. Of him. Who's gonna partner him in defense? Yeah, I'll talk. I'll talk about that in a second. But just sticking on him, uh, like both of you, I, I, I'm not gonna pretend I've watched this guy extensively. I watched him a couple times for Atalanta. And Matisse, obviously, you know, we were there for the um, Copa America watch along in the yeah. in the final. Watched that game, and he was he was immense in that game as well. Um, everything I've read about this guy, and from the little I've seen, he looks like a proper defender. Mm. And I think the thing <clears throat> the thing that I like about him, reading up on how he defends, is that the way he defends, I think, is tailor made for the Premier League. Like the Italian league, you associate with like a slower paced league, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But he's mobile. He's always proactive. He's he's all he always wants to defend on the front foot. He he's not the, he. You have certain centre backs who are a bit more calmer <clears throat> and like to wait and assess the situation. Like Van Dijk, he jockeys, he jockeys, he jockeys, and then he makes his move. Yeah. Romero is very much front foot aggressive. Um, he's gonna get in your face. He's gonna try and get the ball before you do. He's gonna try and make an interception. And um, the fact that he got voted the best centre-back in a league that has Chiellini, maybe not Bonucci, obviously, I know he's sort of here and there, but he had a great Euros. Skriniar, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> Roman Romagnoli, um, even Tomori went there and was batting it up. Um, yeah. As well, but Kicked Romagnoli out of the team a bit. Yeah, but he, yeah. He, got voted, he got voted the best centre-back in the league last year, ahead of quite a lot of good centre-backs, like mm. quite a lot of centre-backs that if I gave you the names and said Spurs were in for them, you'd say, yeah, that's a that's a really good signing for Spurs. Yeah. So I have to I have to be excited about this 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 signing on an individual level because I think he <laughs> I think he ticks a box that we've just not had he ticks many boxes that we've just not had anyone um, be able to tick in recent years, which is be able to defend consistently well. Mm. It remains to be seen what he's going to be like in the Premier League, and he's going to need time to adjust, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But for the first time in what seems like an eternity, Spurs are actually just putting their money where their mouth is and just paying the money for a player who can obviously make an impact into our team. And I think the the, the one thing that I like about this signing is when you do your research on him, it looks as if we've done our due diligence, which irks me as to why we took so long to to um, to get the deal over the line. Because it's Daniel Levy though, isn't it? He always wants yeah. to try and get the best deal it's he tries to though, maximise. But, but my thing is this, like you've ended up paying the same fee that they wanted in the first place. You've done your research, stand behind your research, stand behind um, your belief that this is your man. And, and that means putting money down straight away. Mm. None of this laughing about. Like we were linked with Romero like three, four weeks ago and the deal is only being completed now with less than two weeks to go before the season starts but listen i'm not going to bitch and moan about it anymore I, I like what i see and the mm. one thing as well defending on the ground he looks he looks lidge 
and airily as well, we struggled in the air. Um, even with Jan Vertonghen, who was good in the air, we ne- we were never a team that were dominant aerially. Yeah, you I remember you there, saying that was your main worry with Kunde when you was linked to him. Is that yeah, yeah, what yeah, coming straight from you in the air? Yeah, and and Kunde is <coughs> Kunde is um, Kunde's aerial dual success is actually quite good because I didn't watch him enough, but um, Kunde's aerial dual success is quite good. But Romero's, he's in the 90th percentile for aerial dual success uh, for centre backs across all the big five leagues. He's mm-hmm. in the 90th percentile for interceptions. He's in the 90th percentile for um, pressures as well. So this is a guy who, on the face of it, looks like he actually loves defending. And that's something we need in our team because we genuinely don't have any good defenders. Like mm. the bar is so low, and I think he comes in and he pushes that bar right up there, right up there. Yeah. Will you be playing a back three or a back four this season with Nuna? I'd expect to back three, wouldn't it? That's what you've been using at Wolves. And I saw you linked with a Damatore and all these things as well. Just points towards a back three. Um, we were playing because I've not watched, I've only watched highlights of our friendies this season, but I've been doing my reading and research and um, everyone's, all the Spurs journals are, report, are reporting, sorry, that Nuno is playing 4 3 3. He's starting with a 4 3 3 for most of these games and he's switching to a back three in the second half and stuff. So I think he's going to play a bit of both. Like, even in his interview, he said he wants to be adaptive and he is an adaptive coach. Do you get what I'm saying? My only, my only worry and the main reason I, I didn't actually want Nuno was how he set his team up. At Wolves, it was always to 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 um, sustain pressure and counter. And I think, whereas we had our predecessor um, or his predecessor play that way, it wasn't successful and it wasn't going to work with the players that we have now. The key was either to get better players who can make that system work, or play a different way. And my preference is to do both: get better players who can make a system like that work, but play a different way as well. Hmm. And I'm hoping he plays a different way. So let's let's let's, let's see how it's, it goes. It's a good sign, the man. Like, I think with Nuno as well is like I feel like the only reason why he played like that at Wolves was because of the players he had at his disposal. Everything just sort of fit really nicely to play that sort of counter-attacking football. And this um, um Romero coming in, like I said, that that statistic you brought up about him being in the 90th percentile. I had a conversation with some other fans the other day as well. It's not even just that he's in the 90th percentile. The number of actual challenges that he's won is quite a great amount. I've forgotten the exact number, but it's actually a re- relatively high amount. So that percentage is actually more impressive than it is. But before I move on, I wanted to ask you who do you who would you pair him with? Like, what, what, what's the pairing looking like for him? Like, assume you're playing in the back four because I feel like Nuno is going to bounce between the back four and the back three depending on the game you guys are going up against. Like, I don't know. Spurs is um, back line. Your centre back options aren't really the best. It's are they? Bad. The, the centre back options mm. are bad. Let's 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 call it play this way. Even with Romero, we still don't have a good centre back. I was just trying to be nice, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Joe Joe Rodon Joe Ro, Joe Ro is average. Tanganga's got promise, but I don't think he's gonna get the number of minutes at centre back that I want him to get. And Eric Dyer is dog shit. Davidson Sanchez is dog shit. So, <laughs> so. We need two centre backs. Everyone and their aunt and their dad and their uncle they can see that we need two centre backs. I've been screaming it for the whole year now. The whole fan base are saying it. Romero is not enough. We need two centre backs as a bare minimum. Yeah, mm-hmm. two centre backs. And the worry is the club have out spent such a hefty amount on Romero, and they're going to neglect the other centre back. Um, we've been linked with Tommy Yasu. Um, from um, Bologna, who was playing at the Olympics. Um, I don't really know much on him. I don't know if he's good or bad, but from what I've read, he seems decent. Um, we've been linked with Milenkovic at Fiorentina. Who's in- have you have you ever heard of Matt Miasco? Yeah, you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> the silence. The silence. <laughs> I've got, pop- I've got a business proposition to make for you, big man. Matt Miasco, have you heard American born, ball playing centre back. Very muscular as well. Do you know where I'm coming from? Have Very you heard cool. of this phrase? Have you heard of this phrase? Um, kiss my black ass. Have you heard of that phrase? <laughs> <laughs> Miasco. Kiss my black ass. Miasco. This guy, this guy oh, that's been goodness. rotting in your fucking under 23s and being bounced from loan to loan for like 
a decade now. I love the way you see the way I didn't even offer you Kurt Zuma. I didn't want to offer you that because I was like, mm, not really. No, I'd rather offer you business. someone that we completely don't need, you know. Um, he's got height, he's talking about aggressive defending. I'm pretty sure he's quite aggressive. Yeah, so I can see play? I can see a red card in his future as well. So there's something why don't something you play? about why don't you play? Why don't we play him? Because we're better than you. <laughs> We've got a better team. What I'm saying is, if he's so decent, why has he never played for Chelsea? Because he's not, he's not no, Champions but, League level, no, but, but I definitely think he's, he's no, but when you know, Kazakhstan, you Belarus. Matisse, you don't need to explain too much. Side, why wasn't he playing? Because when, when, we're Matisse. playing Champions League level, but you, you guys have got those... Too much. Yeah, Toby, you've got you those know, You know to... this. Toby, yeah. you know this. Toby, you know this. My answer... Is your level? You know this, bro. You know this. There are levels to this game, bro. Respect you've got those trips to like the Honestly. mysterious island and shit. We've, like, we've, we've, we've just signed right. Romero, and we've just spoken about how Spurs need good centre backs, and you lot are trying to give me um, Chelsea's tenth choice option in the under twenty threes. You can't even make your bench. You can't even make your bench. Does he even make the bench? Though. Does he even make the bench for your for your development team? It makes years though. I'm not. I'm not and sure. Not, and he's not. And he's not 23. He's 26, by the way. And he makes he's your bench. Christ, That's exactly. Like that. He's been there for years. I remember this guy on FM for heaven's sake. He's <laughs> one, and a half, one and a half star. If you're lucky, you know. This brother said FM. FM. You're actually ridiculous. Star, um, uh, Scout recommends you should sell him. He's one of them players, bro. Get him out of here, man. Get Listen, I'm. I'm just trying to do some good business, man. If you don't Isn't want it, it you know, you just have work. to say, yeah, cool. I'd rather, keep, I'd rather work. keep um Davison Sanchez than, than that guy. Mm. Fair enough, fair enough. But each anyway, tour, each to your own, each tour. Yeah, you know. Anyway, I've spoken enough about Spurs, so we'll, we'll come back to the Harry Kane topic in a second. But this is a Spurs and Chelsea stream, so I actually want to jump over your side of the pond. Um, I won't talk about Kunde just yet because I've, I want to talk about the most recent news, which is. You lot's desperate, desperate plea to sign the man that you let go for 18 million or 22 million to Everton a couple years back. Yeah, mm. talk me through this. Well, it's, you've been compared to him a lot this season. I've just gone with the Inter Milan yeah. kit and everything, so yeah. you know, we may, it's just we're just trying to get you. Do you know what I mean? We're just trying to bring you across to the other side of oh, London, make you happy, yeah. get you some we're trophies. To do no, we're not trying to do no wish thing, fam. We're not on that level. Come on, come on. <laughs> I'm not trying to do that still. That's a good thing, you know. Wow. Oh, my days. But, I mean, listen, beggars can't be choosers, Chelsea fans. Do you know what I mean, I've seen people turning their nose up at Lukaku saying, oh, well, you know, he's 28 years old and why are you paying 100 million euros plus for someone that's 28 years old and we should, you know, be going after this, that and the third. Beggars can't be choosers. We don't have a world-class striker at the football club. Abraham is basically on his way out, um, which is so clear, clear as day at the end of last season when he, when Tuchel wasn't using him. And yeah, he might not be exactly perfect for our system and he might have to make some adaptations. But to be honest, I don't care. Do you know what I mean? We need to bring in someone. We have no choice at this point. We're in August. We've got a game next week against Villarreal next Wednesday. Um, so we really do need to get a striker in. So this team lacks strikers. When Jorginho is your top goal scorer, last season in the Premier League with seven penalties scored and Zuma at one point was also up there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when that's your situation, you can't really be complaining and saying, um, you know, <laughs> oh, we don't want this guy. We want this guy. Like, no, you, you, you get who you get at this point. So, yeah, man, he's got the mentality as well. He's changed up his game since he's gone to Inter Milan. He's become way more well-rounded. I think people are still getting onto him way too much from that Man United stint when maybe they say his first touch wasn't the best and all this kind of stuff. Um, but he's still banging goals. Everywhere he's gone, he's got he's got goals. West Brom, Everton, United, Belgium. He's got a great record with all of them. So, yeah, he's, he's way more, you know, complete than people give him credit for. I think the Euros showed that. It's a great instance of him for Belgium making that run into the channel down the right some step overs, takes his man on, cuts in, sets up Hazard, who sets up De Bruyne for the goal. So he's a team player as well. So, yeah, I think he's going to bring people into game, into the game. He's a mobile, you know, versatile centre forward. He's going to be able to hold the ball up. He's got some strength. Good penalty box striker as well in terms of his runs and, and his awareness and anticipation. He's going to score headers. So we're not going to hopefully have so many chances wasted from Reese James's crosses. Get some assists on there. I know Toby, you know what I mean? It's, 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 statistically, he's not standing up with the rest of them. But listen, if you see 
the 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 compilation of robbed Reese James assists assists. You no, guys he, would he, you guys would know it's cool. mad. He can whip he can whip in he can whip it in the kitchen for sure. Hundred percent. So yeah, I, I, I'm I'm a hundred percent down for it. And money for me is just, listen. People are saying there's no resale value. That's that's not my problem. That's Chelsea's problem. These man are moving like we sell shoes, fam. We should get out, fam. All you're all talking about <laughs> resale. Yeah. This man should fuck up, bro. <laughs> But Dammy, before I come to you, let me just quickly read this super chat. So, up the gunners, up the tobes, up. Nah, I'm, don't say up Matisse and up Dammy. Fuck them. They fuck Chelsea. Yeah, there this you brother's go. Brother's some host, isn't he, Dammy? <laughs> this man, this man goes up because they called him. They he called said, him the blue. He got angry, man. Can you imagine? He, he said, was, "Fuck off, time, you guys, and fuck off, you blue." So, <laughs> he's an Arsenal fan. So, big up, big up yourself, anyway. Um, Dammy, I'm going to come to you on this as well because Matisse made some good points about Lukaku. I think Lukaku would be a quality signer for Chelsea. I think, I think, I think outside of the elite strikers and then the generational talents like Haaland, <clears throat> I think Lukaku is a striker who is who is banging on the door of 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 that sort of top end level of striker. I don't think he's there yet. I don't think he's a world class striker, but. He's a bagsman. Do you get what I'm saying? And I think, like Matisse said, he's he's worked on the the weaker parts of his game, and I think he's a fully functioning striker. And what I mean by that is he isn't just someone who can score with his left foot; he can score with his right foot as well. <clears throat> mm. He works the channels really well. Something that Matisse keeps telling me that Tammy Abraham does, but I'm yet to see it. <laughs> he, he, runs tries. he tries. <laughs> he, he runs the channels well. He bullies the opposition, and I think his 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 ability to bring others into play would serve you lot well. Because I think one thing which you lot are getting now from Timo Werner is he's active, he's a presence, he causes the opposition problems, but he just can't stick the ball in the back of the net. So I mm. think Lukaku gives you a different type of constant threat, and he's able to score goals. So give me your thoughts. I can't lie to you. Um, even as late as early as this afternoon, I told people that I'm willing to bet hundred pounds that he doesn't sign. So this news coming out and everything coming out the way it has done has actually put it's caught me off guard. I must be one hundred percent honest with you. Now, a few months back, obviously, I told a lot of people that I would rather have Erling Haaland over Lukaku. But one thing I can't doubt is the fact that based on his metrics and numbers last season, he's one of the top five strikers on the globe right now. And like Matisse rightfully said, everywhere he's gone, regardless of how Poor his poor his first touch has been. I've still got that thing in me, to be fair. But regardless of how poor his first touch is or how clumsy he can be on the ball, he always bags the goals. And that's one thing that Chelsea need right now. Chelsea don't necessarily need a striker that's going to... Obviously, like it would be good to have a striker that can scrape you wins. When I think scrape wins, I'm thinking Diego Costa. Man could get, win us three points all on his own. You know, coming from no help from anybody. I remember West Brom. 76 minutes, he came on by himself, took on like four defenders, boom, top left corner. Lukaku can do stuff like that, but one thing I know Lukaku will do for us next season is score quite a few goals. Will he score 20 goals next season? I'm looking at something like that. That's what you need. I've not seen a team here win the Premier League title without a striker that's capable of scoring 20 to 25 goals a season. Lukaku brings that to the table for us. And one thing Chelsea did a lot of last year was create a lot of chances. And Lukaku can be that guy in and around the box that can finish it off as well. Not only that, he can pair up really nicely with the likes of Havertz, Simo Werner, Callum Otto-Dodoy, Pulisic. He'll be finishing off the chance, those crosses from Reese James, blinking up with it. It, it. it just works so well. It works so well. A lot of people talk about the finances. They say he's too expensive. I've literally... And that narrative, I don't know why people spun it so badly. On the TL, a lot of people were saying he was going to turn 29 soon, when he literally just turned 28. So it's not even like he's that old. He's just entering his prime. I don't mind spending 100 million because... To be honest, beggars can't be choosers. You can't start begging and you can't start choosing when you push things out this late. So it's a good sign in the map books, man. Honestly speaking, the fee for me, as long as he actually comes in and does what he needs to do, I couldn't care less because he's going to come to Chelsea and stay here for like four years. So that's four potentially really good years, isn't it? So I'm quite happy with the signing, to be fair. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I do I do, I do, do think, though, that um, you're probably not going to sign him, though, because Inter absolutely do not want to sell him. Um, not for the wrong gonna, amount. It depends. It depends on how much you put down because I don't think you're gonna sell. I don't think Inter are gonna sell him until you, unless you make a bid that's astronomical. We're talking like 100, 130, 140 million pounds, not euros. One hundred twenty million euros. One hundred twenty million euros. Get it done. 
they, they, they rejected not, that. Not, mm. I no, I think I, I do think 120 million euros would get it done. They've tried to put Alonso, Marcus Alonso, Alonso in the deal yeah. as well, um, which again, you know, Chelsea have been trying to do that with a lot of their negotiations. If you look at Kunde as well, they tried to involve Zuma, and that's just Chelsea struggling to get rid of their players that are in the you know peripheral parts of the squad, and they're they're struggling to get the value as well, especially in a market like this. We've already gone through Chelsea's deadwood list. It's, ridiculous how many players that are still on the books a lot of the sales have been actually promising youngsters not players that we're actually wanting to get rid of um so with that being said i think yeah i think 120 million euros would get it done um apparent but I, I still feel like it's mostly in the in you know in the ball court of lukaku it's whether he wants to make the move or not and i've said it before i said it on twitter yesterday that lukaku is a very emotional guy you can see it with Conte, you can see it on social media, the way he interacts in his Q&As. You can see it the way that he bites back um, with the criticism of people not really rating him as one of the top strikers in the world. And he feels like he always needs to prove himself up against the very best, despite his goal output. Um, I'd probably feel the same if I was him as well. Never really gets spoken about as one of the top strikers in the world with your Lewandowski, your Harry Kane, your Erling Haaland's despite the output that he's bringing every single year. So he's got a bit of a chip on his shoulder at all times. Um, and the last time Chelsea tried to get him, the last time Chelsea, Chelsea tried to bring him in, they didn't really prioritise him. That was Conte who did. And they were a little bit wishy-washy at hierarchy level. And in the end, you know, he chose Manchester United because that's where he felt appreciated, valued, wanted. Top target. He was at Man United. Chelsea, he was like maybe second. And that's the same that's happened again this time with Erling Haaland. So for me, the, mo the main person that will dictate whether this still happens is Lukaku himself, which is what's being reported, not into Milan. You know, if, if, if Lukaku starts kicking up a fuss, then Inter, I think Inter will take the money um, because they need it. They're in financial difficulty. Chelsea, we can bid as much as we want, but at the end of the day, it's up to Lukaku if he wants to actually make the move. So reportedly, it's going to be him that makes the decision, not his agent, not anybody around him. It's going to be him. So we'll see if he... If he um, is okay to be down as, as as Chelsea's backup option to Ireland, which is what it, what it really is clearly publicly. A lot of people in the comments <clears throat> mentioning the striker that we've been linked with as well. And I've, again, I've not watched the full 90 minutes of him, but from the clips I've seen him, from what I've read, he looks proper. Like Vlahovic, is that someone that you lot would consider at Chelsea? For me personally, he's too young. He's too young. I haven't seen enough of him. I think it's massive pressure to come over from from Florentina and then start leading Chelsea's front line at that age um, with not more than a couple of seasons under your belt at the top level. The only reason why Erling Haaland, everybody's ready to dismiss the age is because he's a freak. You know, the goal output that he's bringing in Champions League football is mm. ridiculous. He was Champions League top goal scorer last season and I don't think he got past the, was it the quarterfinals or maybe even the, you know, yeah, quarters. Yeah, quarters. So to finish top scorer, getting knocked out of the quarters is already a statement in itself. But outside of that, I think this is the perfect age range profile that Chelsea should be looking at. Someone that's in their peak, seasoned pro, tested in multiple multiple countries and leagues, adaptation-wise, settling in, he's not going to have any problems as well. Um, and proven, proven player. And, you know, he's got leadership qualities, physically in shape as well. Lukaku, you know, you can see he's in great shape in those training photos as well. Someone that takes care of himself, not going to pick up injuries, touch wood. So there's a lot of reasons why you go for a Lukaku over... Um, you know, over you know anybody else, Lataro Martinez. I would you know people saying in, in the chat as well. Again, for me personally, nah, I'm, I'm that's not. That's not our build. That's nah, not, our build. not for me. You know what I'm saying? That's almost like by. I don't want to compare him to Werner directly, but he he needs it. He'd be a lot more effective if he has someone to play off of in it. You know, I'm coming from. So I'm not yeah. really trying to see him playing down the middle by himself. That's almost like replicating what we did last season in it. So. I would rather stay away from that one, but like you just rightfully said, yeah, yeah. Let me let you finish. Let me. Sorry, yeah, you just you just can't trust Lataro right now to guarantee you goal output on his own up yeah. front in in a new yeah. league as well. He's still very young. It's a lot of potential. Uh, so wait, wait, when you say goal output, how many goals are we talking? Are we talking like twenty five to thirty goals? Need, 20, I need 20, to minimum twenty, yeah, minimum twenty. 20. Yeah, it's what twenty? Like I league? said, how many? How many times? Do you have? Twenty in the league. Twenty in the league. league like, yeah, in the league. Yeah, minimum. Because like I keep saying, like. Your striker is that's why I brought Diego Costa because as much as he's got 20, was it 20 goals in that first season when he came, there yeah. were games where he won them on his own, and I can mm. rely on Lukaku to do that. That's been one of my criticisms of Haaland actually, because every goal that he scores is being provided by one way, shape, or form. In it. Do you know where I'm coming from? So 
For me, Lukaku actually comes into this team. And I know for <coughs> a fact there will be some games. I wouldn't be surprised if he ended up winning us like six to nine points just by himself. Or even maybe 12. Do you know what I'm coming from? So that kind of striker, that mode of striker, the experience, like he scores everything. He scores, he can, he's, phys he's a physical presence in the box. He's not slow either. In and around the 25 yard box, he can take a crack at a goal as well. Mm. He can do a solo thing by himself. He can provide for other people around him. So he's very, very complete. Very, very complete. When you talk about all these other nice, they were talking about Lahovic or something as well. People were mentioning that as a name to me as well. I'm not really feeling it. You know, I'm coming from that's not the sort of, that's what the level of track I'm looking at. They've all got potential. They can all go places. But next season, as a Chelsea fan, every Chelsea fan knows this, UCL or not last year, the objective is to win that Premier League and you need a striker that can score consistently for you. Lukaku brings that to the table. I think I think with um, with Lataro, I do think, of course, I think having watched both of them, Lukaku is the better striker. Like there's no, there's, there's no... There's no debate in that one, but I do think, I do think, Lataro is cleaner than Lukaku technically, and I think with Lataro he has gears to go. I think he does need to prove that he can lead the line by himself, but I think he's got the quality to do it, and I think he's got a a, a decent range of finishes. He's not he's, he does miss chances in front of goal, but he's not he's not an invalid in front of goal. You get what I'm saying? He's not someone yeah. who's gonna who's gonna keep missing and missing. And missing. I think if he gets a consistent run of games in the team, I think he'll score. And I think he's a striker who who can offer you like what you want in terms of the link up. And I've been speaking to a guy who watches who watches um a lot of Serie A football and he was saying that one of the best things about Lataro is he's always trying to be a threat in behind. He's mm. a mobile he's a mobile striker so he's got the link up. He 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 isn't he isn't unreliable and build up he's not going to kill your counter attacks yeah he works hard and he's always trying to make runs in behind in behind i think the tower if you lot signed him i don't think that's a bad sign for chelsea at all i think in fact that would be a very good signing for chelsea but i get your i get your point you lot want you lot if you're going to shell out a lot of money you lot want now 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 i need mm. 20 plus do you know what it is with with latara as well we've already got quite a lot of young forwards that we can't depend on consistently and then to bring him in who has never played in this league as well we haven't really seen put out insane numbers yet it's, it's a little bit of a gamble and we've got quite a lot of players that float he's a bit of a floater interchanges you know someone that's low sense of gravity we've got quite a few players like that we don't really have an old-fashioned proper just brutal out and out number nine who just goes and gets goals do you know what I mean and, and is goal hungry and I feel like Lataro's you know, more of a second striker type player like Werner, where, you know, he can be a good, you know, striker next to someone. I was actually quite high on him before we signed Werner, but to have so many second strikers in the team, unless your chance creation is going to be like Pep, um, where you don't really need a striker, personally, I, I would always favour just someone that I know is, is a goal getter, someone that literally has not failed to score goals Anywhere he's gone, like he's literally a goal machine, Lukaku. Lutaro um, will score goals though, especially. Mm. In the 90s, but I get what you mean. Like Lukaku is just—he is a better goal scorer right now. He is. Yeah. He is. No, hundred percent. He is. Okay, um, that, that's that's fair. So speaking of, let's see how that let's see how that move um, develops. But speaking of strikers, I have to. I would be. It would be. It would be disappointing of me if I didn't mention. The massive elephant in the room, Harry Kane. <laughs> um, I, see, I see you trolling me, Matisse. Well, um, you told me he was professional, and then suddenly now it's not yeah, looking yeah, yeah. so professional. I can't, lie to you. <laughs> I can't lie to you. People talk about professionalism. I strongly feel that this is Tottenham's fault. Chelsea have done this in the past. This is Tottenham's fault. I can't lie to you. This is mm, Daniel. It's true, you know. Proper Daniel Levy's been a prick. I can't lie. He's been a dickhead because, like, it's a jet see, <clears throat> Unfortunately. In life, like I was telling people on my channel yesterday, in life, yeah, if you're not on the dotted lines, you don't, you can't really take it seriously. You've just got to agree. Sometimes when you agree like that, you can get messed over. And that's exactly what Daniel Levy is doing to Harry Kane right now. Harry Kane, did, he said, okay, you know what? I love this club. I love the fans. I love everything about here, yeah? I'm going to give it my absolute all in my last season. He came out got the most goals, got the most assists, was consistent for Tottenham as well. I know he got a few injuries here and there, but 
He was highly productive. Now, season end has come. He's fulfilled his part of the deal. Fulfilled his part of the deal, isn't it? And now, you've got Levy telling you that, yeah, because only teams in the Premier League want to sign you, I'm not going to let you go. That but, is evil, but, isn't but it? Let me, <laughs> I don't think Daniel Levy is flat out saying he's not going to let Harry Kane go. I don't think that's mm. what's happening here. I mm. think what's happening is you are right. The club have let down Harry Kane. The club, big up the beautiful game podcast as well, um, <clears throat> by the way. But on Harry Kane, um, the club, yeah, and the the hierarchy, we have not matched Harry Kane's ambition or expectations. When he signed the new deal three years ago, it was off the back of Pochettino signing a new deal. It was off the back of us playing our first season away from the stadium, finishing third in the league. That was our <clears throat> third consecutive top three finish. <clears throat> and there was all this talk of us signing more players. We need to do this. We need to do that. I think Harry Kane was made a top earner and he was, he was probably told that Spurs are on the upward trajectory because we were. And since then... The people who are running the club have just let us get worse and worse and worse and mm. worse and worse. So for that reason, I do think, first and foremost, the club have let down Harry Kane, 100%. They've let down yeah. Harry Kane. But football's a business. Business is business. And you signing a six-year deal, yeah, <laughs> signing a six-year deal with no clause, with no nada, I'm sorry, like... You have no one else to blame there. I, I, aside from the club, of course. It's bad negotiating, isn't it? It's poor negotiations. No clause. No nothing, bro. Now, he shagged himself. Because like I, I said on my stream yesterday, I said, this Don is 28, 29. Isn't, he's 29, isn't it? He can't... Like, this guy is already getting injured frequently at this age. He can't even just sit out the whole season. It's not going to run. He'll be finished. This is the best form of his life right now. Peak physique. <laughs> If you don't play football for one year, he's finished. He, he yeah, made the mistake. So, he made, yeah. he, he mm -hmm. made the mistake of signing the contract. Now he's doing yeah. all he can do, which is do what he's about to do right now and try and force to move in the most you know blatant way possible you can, which is to not turn up to training. He has no choice but to do this. He, do you know what I mean? He, because he, he needs he, to he leave. Has no cards on the table. He has no cards on the table, is what I'm None saying. None whatsoever. Literally. Yeah, he doesn't he does have a choice. He can just hand in his transfer request and make he's and already done that, has he not? I don't think he has done that. Well, I think he did fact, already. I think he has. I think he has. Yeah, he has all, done that already. All he, so. can do, all he can do for me is restate his desire to leave and make it public. Make it public that you that you tell us from the horse's mouth, you say, I want to leave Spurs. I think he's already done that. And I think it's no, obvious. He, it should be he, obvious he, by now. Yeah, yeah he, it's obvious for me. It's obvious for me. It's obvious for everyone. But just to make it abundantly clear, you come out and you say it from the horse's mouth, I want to leave Tottenham Hotspur. Proof mm. is in the pudding, isn't it? Proof he needs one of them Rashford in. essays yeah. right now, because, from, honestly. The way I see it is this, yeah? The way I see it is this. It's unfortunate for him that he is he is locked in a three-year deal because he does not have the power. He does not hold the power. Spurs hold the power. We, yeah. have a, we, we hold the power. But what he has going for him is that one of the few clubs who can afford him, they want him. Mm. So... Not only does one of the few clubs who can afford him want him, it's literally the richest club in the Premier League. The richest club in the Premier League that just made a Champions League final, which from our experience, because we've been there, obviously you lot have won it, we haven't, but you were there as well. You know the, you know the money involved in getting to a Champions League final. Yeah. Your team yeah. set to bank at least 100 million. And that's mm. without you winning the competition. But also, so, I've said I've said this before. This is this is prime time to sell Kane in terms of value. He's never going higher than this for me. I don't think he's going to keep going up. I think you're you're yeah. you're, you're capping yeah. here maximum here. So for Tottenham, in terms of squad rebuild, I said it at the start of the window. I feel like as long as your recruitment is on well, your, your recruitment needs to always be on point anyway. But with a new manager and taking in that Harry Kane money for someone who doesn't want to be here. You just got Son signed up to a new contract as well. So it's not all doom and gloom. You should be taking this money and reinvesting it into the squad and trying to go again because Tottenham are in a rebuild anyway. Do you know what I mean? It's not like as if you're at the peak of your powers. It's not like as if you're chasing Champions League football, even with him in the team. 
right now. And it's the same goes for, for you know, nowhere near the title. So you may as well cut your losses and you're not really cutting your losses because you're getting a whole heap of money for him. You should be anyway. And then rebuilding the squad. But by the time, if he does move now, you're leaving yourself quite late in the window to make moves unless you do what Aston Villa did and you start spending that money before you even get it, which is what, which is what you probably should do, to be honest. But my, my, my thing is this though, again, who's to blame here? Mm. Who's to blame? Who, who do you blame here for this move being stored? Um, I actually, well, I, I, I actually think, cause before I, you know me, I've been saying 50, 50, I think it's 50, 50, but after what's happened this week, for me, it's 65% or even 70%. I think he's going to leave and I think he's going to go to Man City and I think he's going to go for the price that Spurs want. But mm. my the thing that really irks me here is people are looking at Spurs as the pariahs. People are looking at Spurs as the bad guys. Why are we the bad guys? Why? This is our best player. Mm. This is our best player. This was the top goal scorer, top assist in the Premier League. This was a guy who just scored four goals at the Euros despite not even... Playing well for the first half of the Euros. Yeah. This is a guy who has scored, who's got one of the best goal to game ratios in the Champions League. This is a guy who who is competing with Lewandowski as pound for pound best strikers on the planet. Why do we have to compromise? Mm. Aston, um, well, um, Aston Villa did not have to compromise when 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 Man City came for Jack Grealish. Man City bid more than what they really should be pay, bidding for a player like Jack Grealish. A hundred million. So you want to pay 100 million for Jack Grealish, who is a talented, <laughs> quality player, but he's no Harry Kane. But you want to, you want us to give you a cut price still for Harry Kane? Nah, man. The math isn't mathing. I'm sorry. It's not mathing. If they want Harry Kane, they need to put up and shut up. They need to come in, make the offer, and be on their way. Mm. Off you pop. Because How, what, what, what is the asking price for him? I, I think it's 150 million pound. Jeez. Straight up. Straight up. Wow. No installments. Wow. Jesus. I think I think I think the club would probably accept installments, but the deal, the total package, well, the total package, it has to be 150 million pounds, and the add-ons, realistic add-ons. Do you get what I'm yeah. saying? Not no bullshit. Oh, if Harry Kane wins two World Cups, you get an extra 10 million or some shit like that. Ballon d'Or closing his contract. So, wow. Big Steve is saying Grealish is young, Kane's 28. Why the fuck do I care about Harry Kane's age? Why do I care about this? <laughs> Why do I care about this? Harry no, Kane this, is this, this my is Big Steve, you. man. Big Steve. <laughs> and the top negotiator is in the building. <laughs> so let me ask you, let, let me ask you a lot of question now. Yeah. If, yeah. if Kevin De Bruyne uh, is I'm gonna ask Steve this question the big six tomorrow. If Kevin De Bruyne, Kevin De Bruyne is how old? 29? I think so. 29 years old. If Kevin De Bruyne went for sale right now, how much do you think Man City would, would demand? <sighs> well over hundred million, right? Mm, yeah, him? but again, yeah. I don't think oh he's got he's had a few injuries as well. I think yeah. go, you're going yeah. too far. I think 100 million plus, but you're not coming at 150 for me for Kevin De Bruyne. You need to be looking at that 110 20 mark around that. And max, Bruyne, max. Kevin, I think one sec. Let me just do the Google. Kevin De Bruyne. Well, keep it real, but I don't know if I don't think I don't know if I don't know you're if keeping you're in a row, Harry Kane. If you're Kevin De Bruyne is 30 years old. In his position, actually, Kevin De Bruyne's position that he plays on the pitch, I don't know if he's even worth that. that amount of money. That's what I'm saying. My point is like, my point is like with Harry Kane, I can't lie to you. I definitely hear where Toby's is coming from in it. Like from a club perspective, from a financial perspective, from an asset perspective, I'm not even good. Like Kevin De Bruyne and Harry Kane. Harry Kane is literally, you could argue the best in his position. I didn't say he's the best in his position. You could argue he's one of the best in his position. Top three at the bare minimum right now in world football. And he has been doing it for years. That step up move has been pending for years. Big, can you imagine? Big Steve. Fam, what do you think, how much do you think he's worth? Put it in chat, bro. Put his value in chat, bro. What are we doing? Man is saying, wow, are you mad? No, no, no. We're not going to have that. But like but I said. You, mm. Go on, go on. Make your point and I'll address Steve after. Yeah, because my thing is like, like I said, 150 is like, it's ridiculous. It's like... If you're looking at this from Tottenham's view, I get where you're coming from. But from Harry Kane's view, it's also a piss take, isn't it? Do you know what I'm coming from? It's a piss take. Because I can Wouldn't you agree with me when I say to you that they definitely did promise him, you know what? We'll let you leave in it. Why are they playing so much hardball? I get why you're playing hardball. If it's me, Chelsea played hardball with Courtois. I get it. I fully 100% get it. 
But then again, it doesn't change the fact that it's a bit of a dick thing to do still. Despite the fact that it's one of your big assets. But you know what you know what it is though, you know what it is though. And um Jack Grealish is 26 in September. So he's even two years, he's two years younger than Harry Kane. And you're telling me they're worth the same. Even though one has a significant well, great standard in football. Jack Jack Grealish hasn't even kicked the Champions League ball. Is he 26 in December? Yeah, he is. Yeah. September, but September. Bro, I still, yeah. I thought this guy was like 23. No, no, bro. It was Jack Grealish has been about for a minute. So, so um, um, I get the point you're making, but and it would, it, it would be more palatable for me if Man City made a bid close to our valuation. If they had made 135 million pound, and you're saying, "Oh, Spurs are playing hardball," I say, "Yeah, I can understand where you're coming from," and I would still say. Spurs should demand 150 million because of the team that it is and because of what Harry Kane is worth. But they made, Dami, they made a 100 million pound bid. A 100 million pound bid. Yeah. This is a club that spent 50 million pound on John Stones five years ago. They made the John Stones the, the record highest centre back. He's very young, though, isn't it? The, the, the potential. Question, bro, do you, the question is to you, too, oh, Matisse, do you see Harry Kane costing 100, 100 million next year? One sec, Dami. John Stones is 26 now and had a great year last year for Man City. Yeah. Is he even anywhere close to being one of the best centre backs on the planet? No, 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 he's not. He's not. But, go, but at the time so at Everton, now. he was playing like as if he was going to be the modern day, you know, ball playing freak of a centre back. So he played well, but what's what's mad is they bought John Stones when he was dipping at Everton. Like, mm. I mean, yeah, that is true. Bought, they bought him when he was dipping in form at Everton. They didn't even buy him when he was prominent at Everton. Mm. His form was dipping and boom. They splashed 50 million. Yeah. Everton are difficult million. negotiators, though. 42 um, million on, on Mangala. No, big man thing. 42 million on Mangala. 62 million on Rodri. 62 million on Diaz. Um, 30 million on a goalkeeper, bro. When I think I think when you're to, when you when you're starting to get close to that hundred plus million, you're buying a brand as well. You're buying a brand. Do you know what I mean? You're buying a whole, it's not just it's not just a player now. You're you're investing in a brand. You look at Neymar, you look at Mbappe. You know, Ronaldo once upon a time as well. It still is obviously a massive brand, but obviously falling off in terms of um, level a little bit. But these players, when you're buying them, you're, you're looking at shirt sales, you're looking at all these things as well, the name. So I think <sighs> Kane's a difficult one because of these injuries. I just think every season he does pick up an injury and misses a bit of time as well. This this 40 so million on... The 40 so million on Ake is is, is, is is crazy. It's crazy. So Kevin De Bruyne, Matisse. Kevin De Bruyne gets injured every. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's why I'm. That's why I'm saying maybe even his valuation. I'm putting it too high at even one, one ten. You know, you're not putting it too high. He's the best midfielder on the planet. He is the best midfielder on the planet. He is. Harry Kane is pound for pound top two strikers on the planet. You're not putting his value down. Kevin De Bruyne is a is a ridiculous midfielder, Mm. and if Man City put him up for sale now, they would expect a hefty offer. Yeah. So why 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 do people want us to bend and compromise for Harry Kane? So it doesn't make sense. He, he hundred and ten million, one hundred and twenty million on a thirty year old man. Is what I would saying. do it. Listen, Juventus paid eighty something million for a thirty three year old Ronaldo. I would do it, bro. Do you know what? Do you know? I would do it. Do you know what it is with Harry Kane? Kane. I would, I'll say it with chess now. If Kevin De Bruyne was available and I had one hundred and twenty million to spend on a midfielder, I'll spend it on him. I'll mm. get this is why I thought no waste money. Do you know? Do you know what it is with Harry Kane? Is he what goes in his favour? He doesn't. He doesn't rely on pace as well. Do you know what I mean? He doesn't rely on pace, so you can actually see him lasting at the top for a good, you know, five more years minimum because of the way that his style is. He doesn't rely on his pace, and he guarantees you goals again. Do you know what I mean? This is what we're talking about with Lukaku. You look at Kane's record in the Premier League since that that breakout season after playing in the Europa League for Tottenham, um, wearing the number eighteen shirt. Banging in goals galore, and he's never failed. Like at no point has he ever dropped dropped the ball. And again, you know, mentality, you know, not in question as well. Seems to be someone that's that's looking to chase Shearer's record. So you're not going to see a drop off, most likely. Playmaker and striker in one. So you can see why he's 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 yeah. valued so high. You can. And in one point, and Steve says because you're Spurs and only us can pay, you need money for the rebuild. We do need money for the rebuild, but we're no smocks. And, and in fact, tell a lie, we are smucks. We're stupid. We're a shit club and we're smucks. But when it comes to selling our players in their prime, we are no smucks. We're not Trust, we bend. tried it with Modric. Yeah, you tried it with Modric. We're not going to bend to these teams' demands. 
Teams that want our players at their prime, they've got to pay top dollar. If Man City want Harry Kane, they've got to pay top dollar. They're trying to sign Jack Grealish now. In world, in fact, quality left winger or number 10 or whatever, and he has potential to be a world-class player. Hmm, but, at 26. But if he goes if he goes to Man City, is he an automatic starter for you? Like, can you... Can you He'd have, have to be at the price they're about right, to pay. Yeah, He'd have to be. No, yeah. He'd have yeah. to. You say the price they pay, but... In terms of the players they've got in their squad now, can you actually say um, Jack Grealish goes into that team and he's a he's a guaranteed week in week out starter? Can you say that? I mean, not oh, maybe yeah. not week in week out because they've yeah. got so much competition and Pep yeah, loves to rotate. He loves he Pep's a rotator. But if you look at Grealish last two years, chance creation wise, you, you'd have to start him off that. Yeah. I'm not saying you can't start him, but I'm, I'm saying there's options. You get what I'm saying? Like yeah, you got options. Sterling are very it's good Euros. Nailed, it's not a nailed on formality that Jack Grealish starts every week because you're going from Aston Villa to literally the Centurions champions that mm. have players better than you in that team. Yeah. Harry Kane, you sign Harry Kane. If they sign Harry Kane, there is no one like Harry Kane in their, in their team. There is no one like Harry Kane in the league. And there is only a, a push, one striker in world football who I will, ha, I will reluctantly accept people saying he's better than Harry Kane. That's Lewandowski. That's Lewandowski. So wh why should we then let that all of that go for 100 million? For 100 million. You lot are trying to spend 120 million euros on Lukaku. Is yeah, but that's, we're, we're we're in a position where we we are desperate, and Inter Milan you know that. But so are they. They need a striker. They I would say they're desperate for a striker, but I still think Man City can get by without one because the way that their team's set up, they always seem to thrive off not having that out and out striker. And Torres, a little bit of potential there. Gabriel Jesus, I think they can get by if they was to sign Grealish. The amount of chances they create in the clear cut ones as well. They've played with a false nine mainly for this season and still walked the league. So I, I still think they can they can get by. But I do think Kane is of more value to them than Grealish because Kane, like you said, does offer something completely different to that team. Um, so yeah, it's it's a difficult one. Yeah. And just to just to end as well, you lot know it as well. And I know you'll probably say, "Oh, it's COVID, it's COVID," even though it's Man City. But you lot's darling, the pride mm. of London um, talisman, Eden Hazard. Left your club at 28 slash 29 with a year left on his contract and went for 130 million pounds. Was it was 90 level. million? There were, I mean, a few things here, and it's kind of similar to the game thing because he left for 90 million up front. You know, what I'm saying then the first one that I want to think Ronaldo had just left. You know, what I'm saying to the okay, but first of all, first of all, before we even address that chat from Bright, first of all, don't toss the shot up, carry on, dummy. <laughs> <laughs> Bright, I don't know. I don't know who he thinks. I don't know where where who's you brothers bright? think you can start disrespecting us because we're on who's stream. Bright? Yeah, who's bright? bright? Who is this? Whoever that is, bright from? can't be. Can't MH be and Grandam, stop acting foolish. I knew Hazard was this. I wasn't even that kind of marketable player like Ronaldo, that man you and Chelsea sold him for more. That next time, use commas and full stops. Yeah, sentence, come on. Yeah, you get coming from? Let's not even. Bright, try we're that not going to tolerate. We're not. No, no, we're not. We're not doing that because, like, let me tell you something, Bright. Yeah, you're going to come and mock people or violate. We will. I will violate you back. I'm not even. I don't know why people think they can get feisty just because they're talking to someone on the stream. You know what I'm saying? Them two can be professional, but me, I will drag you through the mud. So please don't do that again. <laughs> but I try, we've kept you respectful so far, so let's not even do that. You get me? But like oh. I was saying, Eden Hazard, once again, it was it's a similar situation, isn't it? It's a similar situation. But then again, like, it wasn't one upfront fee to Do you know where I'm coming from? All right, let's put it like this. Would you, okay, would you sell Harry Kane for about mm. 90, 100, 110, and then yeah. add-ons add up to about 35 million because that's what we did. That's what it was Obviously, for Hazard, Kane's exactly. There was a lot of add-ons. Kane's contract, Kane's contract is a bit longer. You get me? Kane's contract is a bit longer, so I get that. But then again, Aguero, big man thing leaving. Then you've got Ronaldo, he left. Hazard sort of was meant to do replacement jobs. So I can get where you're coming from the comparison, but then again, that 150 million. It's a lot of money, and like a few people ju can justify saying, you know what, that's enough money for a Kane, but then again, this is not something where you can... Because of his injury record and all the things that surround him as it is, I'm not sure, you know. I'm not I'm not sure. That's, that's the I... thing with Hazard. There was a lot of instalments in that deal. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. Like, we didn't get that money up front at all. But you got the bulk, you got the bulk up. Right? Yeah. Yeah, we got the bulk of it now. Most, most deals nowadays, the, the fees are um, um, amortised anyway. Like they're, Spread they're, out, yeah, yeah. yeah. Spread out over years. So as long as Spurs know that money is guaranteed, I'm fine mm. with that. Yeah, so you I just need to make sure you get the right instalments. Yeah, uh, 
provided we get a bulk of it up front and the rest of the songs, I don't mind. Just meet our valuation. And the worst thing about it is they can afford it. We're not talking about we're not talking about Spurs here. We're not talking about about Burnley. We're talking about Man Fucking City. Steve brags about how they're the oil boys. They got so much money. Why? <laughs> why are you? Why are you turning and throwing over 150 million for Harry Kane? Why? Why sway? Like they, uh... they, they got they got more money than sense over there. They won the league, prize, major prize money there. Got to the final of Champions League. Steve tells us. Steve tells me about a new South American kid that they make ten million off every week, every, literally every week. I asked him yesterday how much money you made off transfers, and he said that they, he said that they're going to make close to hundred million off player sales. And I, I need to recheck. Hundred million from player sales. Who who are they selling? A lot of players. Oh, I, I guess Bernardo Silva, maybe. Okay. I need to I need to recheck his valuations, but even some play some players that we're we're not aware of, like Harrison, gone to Leeds for twelve million. Um, mm. They're getting money off the Sancho deal. They're getting um, who who is it that they that they've decided to sell? I can't remember. I can't some remember. some other they yeah. Sold I they sold quite a few weeks ago. Sold Angelino in January to to. Um, you to know, Mike. I can't lie. The more to me speaks, I kind of because they don't have peas. You know, but, I mean, but I get it. Time, but then again, they are splashing a hundred on Grealish, so they are gonna obviously. They can afford try it. Get, that's what I'm saying. But because they they're it, because yeah. they're because they're yourself. splashing it on on Grealish, they're obviously gonna they try go. and get the There's price down for you as well. The metro yeah. as well. I think he went for ten million as well. So they, they, they're making money. Not only so one, you're literally funded by a state. Two, you won the Premier League. You, you got to the final of the Champions League. Three, you're now making money off player sales. Something that Man City, we don't associate with Man City. They're making mm. money off sales. Yeah? They're making money off their players. So yeah. these three factors alone. And four, Harry Kane is going to be more important for your team than Jack Grealish. So all of these factors, why are we sat here saying Spurs are the villains? Mm. Why? Man City are the ones that have spoken to this guy. They've got an agreement with this guy. For Harry Kane to do this, it must mean two things. Shit. One, he's spoken to Spurs and um, he's got an agreement to leave, but we've not accepted, we've not, we've not had an offer worth accepting. And two, he's obviously spoken to Man City. They've spoken about wanting him. They've made them first move for him. Man City are devaluing him. Mm. Steve has sent me that. Steve has sent me the list of outgoings. Actually, mad. I, I haven't heard oh. of half these brothers' names. Bro. So Harrison, Harrison, twelve million. Angelino, Harrison, sixteen you know million. Him. Yeah, Angelino, sixteen million. The left back, I think, to RB yeah. Leipzig. Uh, Nemetra, like you guys said, eleven million. I think that's the Belgium striker that they had, or he was. I'm not sure where he's from, but he was. He was. He was doing well in, in Belgium, I believe. Um, Elik for ten million. Herrera for 20 million this week. I don't even know who that is. Sancho cut 12 million because of the sell on um, clause. And then um, Pedro um, Perono from, for 10 million to Lisbon as well. Haven't heard of none of these brothers. Bro, and, and, and that's before Bernardo Silva, or potentially, exactly. and before maybe Bernardo Sterling Silva or. Potentially, or, or Sterling. And yeah. you know, if Bernardo gets sold, he's going to go for around 40 to 50 million. If Sterling gets sold, minimum, 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 he's going for 70, 80 million. Minimum. Minimum. Yeah. There's so just not many. I don't why, know. You tell me why him, Spurs but... are the villains here. Tell me. I mean, but it's kind of like you know, if you're where you, you know, when your mom promises you something in it. Last year, you get your greed, you buy and everything, and when it's time to buy the holiday ticket, she starts telling you it's too expensive. That's a bit peak. <laughs> it's the same thing. It's, it's it's actually the same. It's peak. Is it not peak? It's peak in it. It's kind of peak still. <laughs> I hear where you're coming from. Obviously, you're trying to save money and whatnot, but it's peak. So I can get see both sides. You can fully understand where both sides are coming from here. So I'm not really going to say that I'm going to blame one more than the other because if you start throwing tantrums because your mom can't get a pattern, then you will get caned in it. So that was intentional, by the way. But yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh wow! Well done, well done. That was nice. That was nice. I can't feel like I wasn't even intentional, but it's just one of those things in it. So it's be curious. I'll be curious to see how things unfold. I mean, before like I mean, Toby, what's your what you reckon? What you reckon? I think he's gonna leave. I think he's gonna leave, and I think they're gonna make uh, they're gonna make a bid that we're we're, we're satisfied with, because what they're doing now is they're wasting our time and they're wasting his time. They don't value him as as much as they say they do. If they're if they're bidding a hundred million, simple, mm. simple as. Mm. But I think also what they're doing now this, this is the problem because Kane wants to leave, and Grealish maybe is a little bit. You know, he's turned up for training. So he's, yes, he wants to go maybe, but he's not kicking up a storm. Kane's not even turned up to training. So sometimes 
And what Man City are doing is their strategy is to bid, test the waters and make Kane, you know, start kicking up a storm now and forcing your hand to lower the valuation and seeing if Daniel Levy will break because Harry Kane, his captain, is now not at training and doesn't want to be there and is, is starting to cause a little bit of drama. So that's where Man City are being quite smart. They don't have to, they can't do that with Grealish because Grealish is is obviously at training and he's and he's obviously an Aston Villa, you know, boyhood fan as well. So he maybe doesn't want to go down that route. Same yeah, with Declan Rice at West but, Ham. But, but Kane... Harry, but Harry Kane is miles better than Jack Grealish. As a he player. is, but Harry Kane he's can got, push down the valuation. Him. He can bring down his own valuation by not turning up to training and he by can. say... Yeah, he can, but they still need to bump their valuation up from what they bid. Hundred million, mm. it's not enough. But yeah, yeah, not, not. would you take? Would you take add-ons like just to? Clue, yeah, would I would. I would take. I would. I would take add-ons. I don't know if the club would. I would take add-ons. We just need to get this done now. He wants to leave. I'm happy for Harry Kane to leave. I just want this done so we can move on and and start this new Spurs without Harry Kane. That Simple. Let's go. Anyway, guys, thank you for this. Um, it's Love Island time soon, so you know I got. Oh a dip. God, oh, Jesus God. Christ! I a <laughs> Before I go, let me read the super chat. LOL, Matisse chucking chairs back into the crowd. That that probably applies to you, Dami, as well. When you lot were, yeah. You know, yeah. Mean, back when I, man, man, apologize in the chat as well. I can't lie to you. These days, when you get bare people in stream comments, you don't know who's joking or who's serious. <laughs> so I hear you, Nick, but nah. Bro, you know. <laughs> well, I am anyway. wilding, bro. Man, them, thank you for hopping on. We didn't even get to talk about tomorrow's game, but to be honest, it's a friendly, so... Yeah, no one cares about that game. (laughs) You're not going anymore, are you? You're not going anymore. No, I can't go. I can't go, so I've had to Mm. to sell my ticket anyway. But um, Mm. it's it's at Stanford Bridge, so don't bank on Tottenham winning. But yeah, lads, (laughs) it's been a pleasure. Um, I'll speak to you soon. Folks, if you're still watching, make sure you smash the like. Make sure you're subscribed to the Grand Dam and Matisse Armani. I only clocked like a month ago that Matisse's name is actually Matisse Armani. I don't know why you don't make a bigger thing. <laughs> I don't know why you don't make a bigger thing out of that? That's that's. Well, the, the, my name, my the M A H is the initials, isn't it? Yeah, but there's something to be had. There's something to be done there. Yeah, there's something to be done. Well, there. it's it's my app on every social media. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying, but there's something you can do with the Armani. I'm sure. Do you think so? More. Armani Panani or something, I don't know. Nah, see, no, no, no. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna have you as my as my brand uh, manager. I mean, anyway, personally, that. personally, if that were me, I would not allow that in it. You get me? Like, if that was me, Matisse, I would not allow that from tapping to get where I'm coming from. You're, so just, like, a, you're just a shit story, you, fam. You're just a shit story. It's not me, fam. Always had it all to fire, fam. 100%. Oh, anyway, oh. anyway, um, yeah. Make sure you smash a like, folks. Make sure you leave any comments as well. It's interesting to get everyone's perspective on this Harry Kane stuff. We didn't really get to talk about Kunde as well, but I'm sure you lot have spoken about Kunde till Kingdom Come on your on your channels as well. So mm. I'll be back on Friday with a couple Arsenal folk to talk about Arsenal and to talk about Spurs again and to preview that game on the weekend. But until then, peace out, folks, and take care. <laughs>